And we're now joined by Olivia Enos, a policy analyst at the Heritage Foundation. Olivia specializes in human rights issues in Asia. So, Olivia, this announcement is historic, but we also know that there are still a lot of positions that have not been filled in terms of ambassadors. We don't have a U.S. ambassador to South Korea. How do you think the Trump administration is going to be able to negotiate, noting that we don't have everybody in place? Well, I think right now we have a lot of unknowns. We have an unknown number of people who will actually have the knowledge about Korea policy that we need in order to negotiate. We don't even know what the primary goal is of these negotiations. Is it merely denuclearization or is it denuclearization paired with addressing North Korea's serious track record of human rights abuses? I think there are a lot of questions left unanswered at this point and a lot of questions about how the president exactly is going to proceed. Well, let's explore that a little bit more of the human rights issue because, like you said, denuclearization, it's the big thing that we're all talking about now, but most people may not realize there are a lot of human rights abuses going on in North Korea. Give me a quick summary of what's been going on there and if you think human rights will even be brought up. Well, you know, today there are between 80,000 and 120,000 individuals in prison camps in North Korea. And just a few days ago, we heard that there were roughly 80 Christians who were murdered by the Kim regime. This is a pattern that we see throughout the generations of Kims, absolutely cracking down on human rights and basic freedoms for many individuals. I think it's unclear at this point whether or not the White House will prioritize human rights in the discussions, but I think there is some indication that this is certainly a priority. Vice President Mike Pence brought Fred Warmbier to the Olympics. Of course, we had President Trump's State of the Union address, which had a North Korean refugee there and present to tell his story. The administration's clearly interested in human rights, but whether they choose to shine a spotlight on that in this context remains to be seen. I want to highlight a little bit more the plight of Christians there, because you'd mentioned them. Open Doors USA, an organization working to end Christian persecution, actually said North Korea is the most dangerous country for Christians. What is it about North Korea that they, they persecute Christians in particular? In North Korea is the world's worst persecutor of Christians, as you referenced. And I think that the reason why they persecute Christians is because they see worship of any deity as a direct threat to the authority of the regime. And so they view religion as potentially threatening. I think we see this with many authoritarian leaders, but in North Korea it's particularly pernicious. Individuals who are repatriated from North Korea, sent back from China, are asked two questions. Did they have contact with a South Korean and did they have contact with a Christian missionary? If the answer to either of those questions is yes, they face unbelievable torture and persecution. Okay, we'll be watching to see if the issue of human rights or Christian persecution is brought up uh, in any future negotiations. Olivia Eno is policy analyst and Asian studies expert at the Heritage Foundation. Thanks so much. Thank you.